If I asked you what America's most dangerous snake was, what would you say? A rattlesnake? What if I told you there was a snake even more venomous than most rattlesnakes, and it might be living under your feet right now? In the dry, arid terrain of the Sonoran Desert, it's a constant struggle for survival. Water and resources are precious, meaning that this region's more notable creatures are living deep underground. But once a year, something special happens. Torrential downpours sweep through the desert, delivering that precious substance on which Sonoran life depends, water. I'm Spencer Hoffman, and with my goal to uncover all the secrets of the natural world, monsoon season brings me to the deserts of Arizona in search of insane venomous reptiles. All around us, all sorts of unusual creatures are living out their complex lives in what I call the secret world. And when it comes to the Sonoran Desert, the coral snake is the most mysterious. These are extremely venomous snakes, but a lot of people don't seem to know they exist. Why is it that such a toxic snake flies so far under the radar? And why don't hospitals even produce anti-venom for them? We've got quite the mystery ahead of us, so it's going to be a team effort to unlock all of the secrets of the coral snake. I'm joined by Zachary Gray and Ben Zeno, fellow wildlife educators and some of the best snake hunters I know. And we're hitting the roads, chasing storms, with the hope of finding venomous reptiles. I'm rolling. What kind of snake was it? Is it nice one? Wait, 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 it's a long Oh, sick! Oh. Look at this guy right here. Now that is a very, very cool looking snake. This is a long nosed snake, and while it's not the most rare thing out here, it was something I was hoping to see. Really, really cool looking colubrid. And I was hoping to see this exact color phase of that orange. They look so pretty. And that banding would probably be a mild coral snake mimic out here. That's one of the venomous snakes we're looking for on this trip. Super, super toxic related to cobras. This guy, absolutely harmless. Only thing is, when you're out here in the desert, it is a very, very, very intense place to try and survive if you're an animal. And if you can't tell for sure what you're looking at, you don't wanna mess with it. That banding, that orange coloration, you're like, hmm, that might not be worth it. Now we saw that banded snake and got really excited because the coral snake we're after is a banded snake too. However, the coral snake has those bands for a very special reason. So that bright coloration offers no camouflage in the desert. It's a warning coloration. What that red color advertises is, hey, if you mess with me, I'm gonna mess you up. That being said, we have a lot of other venomous snakes here in the US. What makes the coral snake so different from its pit viper counterparts? Well, the first thing is, it's not a pit viper. See, when I moved down to the south, I knew a lot about bugs, but I actually didn't know a whole lot about snakes. And for the longest time, I thought coral snakes were vipers, just like rattlesnakes and copperheads, but they're actually part of a whole different family of snakes, a group that contains the cobras and the mambas. That group is known as the elapids. The vipers are famous for their hemotoxic venom, the venom that attacks the blood of their prey. The elapids, they're known for a neurotoxin, and it all comes down to what these snakes are eating. See, here in the US, a lot of our pit vipers are mammal specialists. They're eating small and medium-sized mammals, and it turns out a hemotoxin is actually really good at subduing mammalian warm-blooded prey. A coral snake is actually focusing more on reptiles, cold-blooded prey, and it turns out a hemotoxin doesn't work as well on those. So they've evolved neurotoxin, a toxin that attacks the central nervous system, shutting the entire body of their prey down. And it turns out that neurotoxins have a pretty gnarly effect on human central nervous systems too, which is why coral snake bites can be so dangerous. And to me, that's what's so crazy about these little snakes. They're tiny little reptiles. They have an incredible, potent chemical power built within them. And it's these secrets of the natural world that fascinate me so much. So if you're enjoying videos just like this, consider leaving a like so this can spread to more people just like you and they too can discover the amazing secrets of these animals we share the planet with. But if this snake is so unbelievably dangerous, why is it that so many people seem to have never heard of it? It turns out the coral snake is pretty rare. Across the nation, there are people who spend their spare time hunting for snakes. Among these herpers, coral snakes are one of the most prized finds. And this is because these snakes spend most of their time underground, unseen by people. Even if you live somewhere that they're comparatively common, you can still go your entire life without so much as a glimpse of one. To really understand these toxic snakes, I'm gonna need to get up close and personal with one. The only problem is, 
we're not in Arizona for very long, so if we want to see a snake that most locals go years without finding, we're going to need some very good help. Turns out, we know a guy. Or guys, actually. Enter Rob and Nick from Smetlogic Herbing. These guys are expert snake hunters who know the deserts of the Southwest like the backs of their hands. Name a rare snake, odds are they've seen it, and they document their adventures on their very own YouTube channel. These guys are some of the best Arizona has to offer, so if we're gonna catch a coral snake, it's gonna be with them. What's up, guys? Hello. Hey, man. So uh, this is Rob from Smetlogic, and going he's on? gonna be helping us out today. Yeah, man. And uh, uh, guaranteed snake. What, what do you think we're gonna get tonight? Thinking coral. Oh, that would be insane. <laughs> Thinking coral. I don't know. That's that would be a, that would be a life for a leopard. Yeah, so. there you go, man. <laughs> that would yeah. be nuts. This is it. We've got our team assembled and we've come to a spot that Rob says is his favorite for a myriad of venomous reptiles. And boy, did this spot deliver. We weren't far along the desert road when we stumbled onto a beautiful rattlesnake. Look at that. Oh, he's huge. Wow, that's a fantastic snake. Look how pretty you are. Hi. That is one special, special snake right there. This is a black tail. And they're a lesser known rattlesnake simply because they're not really infamous. They're, they're one of the less toxic of the rattlesnake species out here. And as a result, you don't really hear about people dying to these guys. She just wants to get back into the brush. She really doesn't want to hang out here with us humans. Look at that snake. That is one beautiful reptile right there. So I wanted to stop and talk about her because I mean, look at the green olive coloring, those cool jagged, almost kind of like a chevron type pattern on the back. And of course the black tail, where it gets its name. A lot of times I'm talking about, oh, it's so dangerous or it's so venomous, but this one, no, this one was the one we just want to see because it's just so pretty. Not that this one's not dangerous. You wouldn't want to, wouldn't want to pet her. You wouldn't want to touch her with your hands, but that is just breathtaking to see. What an amazing early find. But the rest of the night, the desert seemed to be testing our resolve. Rob's optimistic though, so he pushed on. You know, coral snakes are interesting. I found them when it's super hot out, but they seem to like it a little bit cooler. You know, we just had some rain, got some cloud cover tonight, and the weather feels pretty good. So I'm gonna say tonight's a good night for finding a coral. Here's the thing. There's no doubt in any of our minds that a coral snake will move tonight. The problem is we're covering miles of desert road, and this is a snake that is maybe two feet long at its largest. We're playing a game of needle in a haystack, and we're combing the haystack in the pitch black of night. We decided to split into two groups, staggering our hike. If a coral snake decided to cross the road after the first group passed, maybe the second group would intercept it. We kept this strategy late into the night, seeing no shortage of snakes and other weird creatures. We began to wonder, are we asking too much of Arizona? I can definitely see why so few people can recognize a coral snake. We're out here looking for them with the best of the best, and and we aren't even seeing anything. We doubled back towards the vehicles, resolving to make one last pass of the stretch Rob said was coral snake territory. We were dead silent. Every shadow seemed to taunt us from under the cacti. Every whisper of the wind was a coral snake slinking out of view. My group passed the end of the stretch and made for the cars, and the silence was broken behind us by Ben yelling out the one word we'd been hoping to hear all evening, coral. I heard them yell coral. Look at that! Look at this snake. Oh, this is exactly what we came to Arizona to find. Oh man, there is probably no other snake that could make me this happy. I'm saying, Spencer, that's, that's not very, a very impressive snake. Yeah, it's got some funny colors on it, but it's tiny. Yeah, and it's one snake you really do not want to get bit by. This is the iconic coral snake. There's really nothing that moves quite like a coral snake. If you ever played the snake video game, they <laughs> almost look like the way that you move in the snake video game. Like, you know, they don't really drag themselves through. They almost kind of just, like they're crawling through it, an invisible tube over the ground. It's the only way I can describe it. And they're really, really funky looking. Like, look at how he'll move his head. These are really unpredictable snakes. Not something I recommend you pick up, even though they are fairly, fairly docile. A copperhead, a rattlesnake, it'd be either flipping out or coiling and rattling that tail and just looking at me with that head all puffed up, flaring that tongue. This guy, he's, he's kind of confused as to what's going on. You know, coral snakes are weird. They almost kind of behave like a scorpion of the snake world. They're very erratic, very finicky, skittish snakes. <laughs> They're just kind of these fossorial, subterranean creatures that really move when they want to move, as, as Rob was telling us. I've been out looking for coral snakes several times. They're a bit harder to find out east, but that's, uh, that's not saying much. No matter where you live, a coral snake is not something 
that you're gonna have an easy time going out looking for and just casually picking up. As you've probably guessed with the title of this video, this is a very serious, serious snake bite if you were to receive it. If you get bitten, you might not even feel it. They have tiny little fangs in the front of their face. See, vipers, vipers have hinged fangs. It's big, big fangs that fold out and they can work into their prey, almost like little stingers. These guys have fixed fangs in the front of their mouth, tiny little fangs. In fact, if you were wearing gardening gloves, you could probably pick up the snake and not receive a venomous bite because their fangs just aren't long enough. But if you do take a bite, they're gonna inject that neurotoxic venom into your system. And it might be hours before you even realize that you've been envenomated. So if you are bitten, this is one you wanna go to the hospital immediately. And uh, I'm gonna say, okay, Spencer, well, uh, what about anti-venom? If you get bitten by this, are they gonna give you any venom? And the truth is probably not. And not because you might not need it, but because they don't really make a coral snake any venom anymore. Reason being, it's, it's very expensive to produce medical supplies like that. It's why the anti-venom is so expensive because it's really hard to make. But these guys, they bite people so infrequently that it's not economically viable to produce and have anti-venom on stock. So a bite from this can be very, very serious. What they'll probably do, you get bitten by an elapid, they're gonna probably just put you on a ventilator and hope that you're able to continue breathing on your own. The human body's a pretty wonderful thing. We can, we can fight off venom if we're given enough time to process it. Your liver can take care of quite a few toxins, but you know, if you don't get to attention really quick, that diaphragm, that muscle we use to breathe can seize up and you can go into respiratory failure really quickly. Not a snake to trifle with. As you can see right here, I'm not going hands-on with this animal. I'm keeping it on the hook, just using the hook to kind of keep it in frame so you can see it, so I can appreciate it, because it's something I, it, this is my life for a lapid. I've never seen an elapid in the wild before, let alone a coral snake. And I tell you, it is breathtaking. These are one of the most beautiful reptiles you could possibly see in a true legendary animal of North American wilderness. Something I have been dreaming about seeing for years and to finally be up close and personal with one, that is just breathtaking. Rob, you're the man, <laughs> that is awesome. Now the coral snake is extremely venomous, but as you can see right here, if we keep a healthy distance and use proper tools to work with it, we are in no danger of being bit. It is definitely the snake bite to worry about, but the odds of actually seeing one and the odds of actually being bitten are extremely low. It's crazy to compare the coral snake to a lot of the other venomous reptiles here in the US. Because coral snakes are so obscure, they don't seem to have the mass hysteria that copperheads and rattlesnakes do. The more mainstream a venomous reptile is, the more myths and old wives' tales seem to develop about them. And one of the most notorious old wives' tales about venomous snakes here in the US is that baby vipers are more venomous than the adults. My buddy Jack and I actually put that to the test back in Texas, and the results might shock you. So if you wanna see that video, check it out right here. Hope to see you there, but until next time, don't forget to get outside and find your own adventure.